George Bush saw this. 6th December 1992. That's how he had conducted the inside job of 11th September. <laughs> Time does not permit me to speak about the inside job. That requires a lecture by itself. Inside job of 11th September. Many Americans have spoken about that. Maybe he saw it and he got the idea that let's conduct in New York also. Later on, what happens? This emerges into rights. Throughout the country, there were rights. It is the largest right after partition in the whole country where tens of thousands of innocent human beings were killed, mainly Muslims. Who's to blame? The innocent Indians. They are instigated by the politicians. Fight. Kill the opposite religion people. Instigated. Innocent people. They get instigated and they do the act. We know that even in Bombay, one of the cities that was maximum affected was Bombay. Even during partition, the riot that took place in Bombay was the worst in the history of Bombay. Even during partition, so many people were not killed as during the December 92 and January 93 riots. The police, if they wanted, they could have easily prevented the riot. Very easy. With the backing of the reserve police, with the backing of the military, easily they could have done it. But they did not do it. Most of them were silent spectators. Some were good, they tried, but they were in a minority. Majority were silent spectators, some were party to it. I am aware that even the police is controlled by the politicians. So the police wants to do something, the politicians come in between. So the blame goes back to the politicians. Later on, the government appoints a single judge commission to appease the minority. And they appointed Justice Sri Krishna. It was famously called as the Sri Krishna Commission. And we know that Justice Sri Krishna, he was and is a devout and a practicing Hindu. But at the same time, he is an upright and honest judge. Just like how we have Justice Suresh here. <laughs> an honest and an upright judge. The verdict he gave, it did not go down the throat of the government. It takes a few years. And he had analyzed the full cases of the riots. He spoke with the politicians, with the police. Individually, he visited 26 police stations, analyzed the records, spoke with the police officer, junior and senior, spoke with the victims, spoke with the media, and after a great deal of research, he presented, we have this damning verdict of Sri Krishna Commission. He even gave suggestions how can we prevent these rights? But, you know, it takes time. By the time this happened, the government says bygones are bygones. Because they know if they implement the report, they are afraid that they will lose the vote bank. At that time, to appease the minority, they appointed the commission. How many commissions? I don't know. How many, I don't know how many commissions have been implemented. I think Justice Suresh can tell. How many commissions that they appoint have really been implemented in India? How many? So here we know it is a delaying tactics. The innocent Indians, especially the Muslim victims, we have faith in the judiciary system of India. If the politicians betray us, if our other citizen fellow members betray us, if the police betrays us in this country, we have yet faith in the judiciary system. And we know that finally most of the innocent people, whether they are arrested, etc. They are finally released. But the damage done to them, it cannot be undone. Later on, we come to know, after a couple of months, on 12th of March, 1993, there was a series of 13 bomb blasts in Bombay, in which more than 250 innocent citizens of Bombay were killed. More than 250 innocent human beings were killed. And more than 700 human beings were injured. The opposition said, oh, planned everything. Just as Shri Krishna said, it was not meticulously planned, it was a retaliation. More than one and a half thousand innocent Muslims killed in riots in Bombay. More than one and a half thousand innocent Muslims during the Bombay riots of December 92 and January 93 were killed. It was a retaliation. And the authorities and the police said, it was done by Muslim underworld with the help of some others. That's how the bomb blast took place. And they say, all of them agreed, even the police commissioner, they agreed that it was a retaliation to what had happened in Bombay. We know 
that immediately after the riots of December 92 and January 93, it was difficult for the Muslims to walk on the streets. It was difficult for him to travel in the train, travel in the bus, to work in a non-Muslim area. They were looked down upon, they were ridiculed. Immediately after 12th March 93 bomb blast, those scenario changes. Most of the Muslims, they know that killing innocent people is prohibited. Yet, they had a soft corner for these people who did the bomb blast. They were happy internally. In Islam, two wrongs don't make a right. Islam condemns this act. <laughs> killing innocent human beings is to be condemned. You cannot kill innocent human being if somebody else has done injustice to you. You can't kill a third person even if you belong to the same community. Islam prohibits that. Whoever did it, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, whoever killed more than 250 innocent human beings on 12th March 1993, Islam condemns it. Most of the Muslims knew that killing innocent people is haram, it is prohibited, yet they were internally happy. But you cannot use wrong means to reach a right goal. You cannot. Islam does not permit that you use the wrong method to reach a right goal. There cannot be any justification. We realize.